I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents, and today I have oh, such a treat. I am with Pat Hammer of Samia Rose Topiary. Pat and I go way back. Oh, how many decades? Many, more than we want to talk about. <laughs> Pat is going to show us how to plant a succulent topiary step by step. She'll explain how to care for it, how to keep it looking good for years, and share design and display ideas. Pat started her unusual career at famed Longwood Gardens in Pennsylvania. When I first met her, I was a garden journalist, and she was creating large figures for Universal Studios, the Dallas Arboretum, and the San Diego Zoo. Pat put her topiary business on hold for a decade to serve as Director of Operations at the San Diego Botanic Garden. At the time, she gave the garden nine life-sized topiary dancers and mariachis she'd made for the Philadelphia Flower Show. They continue to be maintained by volunteers and are the most photographed displays at the garden. This is my retirement business, so I'm here to have a good time when visit with people and come to my place. I'm never too busy to talk to anybody and I'm doing small topiaries and we've um, set up a kit that we can ship out to any place in the country and Canada. The hard part's already done. We've already mossed or stuffed the frame with the moss, which takes the most amount of time. That is a new verb, the verb to moss meaning the frames are actually stuffed with moss. The kit can come with plants or without plants, and we put the tools and equipment in the kit so you're all ready to go. Let's talk about succulents. Why, oh, you've made the switch from the, uh, the traditional ivy topiary, which can be trained to cover any form, to planting succulent cuttings in a moss-filled frame. The ivies take a lot longer to grow. You have to wait for them to be rooted in. And everybody wants instantaneous. Sure. Right. Succulents are so forgiving and they root so quickly. Let's go see your technique. Okay. Okay. If you're doing something tabletop size, I think this is about 13 inches, make sure your plants aren't too big what kind of plant to use. Make sure it fits the scale of the topiary. If you were making a giant horse, you could use a giant aeonium. Lay them out on the table and look at the different things. Oh, well, this is going to contrast nicely with this. These make a nice pairing, but then you want something like the jade to make all the colors pop. The more colorful, the, the happier you'll be with your topiary. This moss has been soaked. The bunny's been soaked. And then we take it out and let it dry off enough so that it's not too messy. And then we just begin pinning it in. You can either make the hole and put it in or just pin it right onto the moss. We leave the ears and the face open. Any topiary, you should be able to walk up and say, that's a bunny. Plant it right up to the neck, nice and tight. The pin needs to hold the stem so that it will root in because they'll root right at the surface. Plectranthus. It's not a true succulent. It tends to be white and it's kind of fluffy. I actually go right through part of the plant and anchor it in. I usually try to go in and slightly up and anchor this as tight as I can. But if you knock the plant out of the topiary, get another pin and pin it back in. It's that simple. And you want them to rust because then they look the color of the moss and they disappear and it becomes magic how you've done this. We do a lot of filling in with jade. Jade is what makes the rest of the topiary look fancy. I keep all my topiaries outside in a slightly shady spot. And I use the shade um, to, <laughs> so I don't have to water quite as often. And the trick is I water over this with a hose. You can take it to your kitchen sink. You wanna make sure you're getting the moss wet. Top is always, drier than the bottom. And when you're making any kind of a topiary anywhere, you should only really be making ones that have a smaller top and a downward because the flow of the water. But don't overwater. Don't water it every day. Let it dry out in between. Becoming overly wet tends to make them rot out and then the stems, the plants fall off. Fertilizer, they grow faster. 
and you're looking for a happy medium of them looking good, not growing too fast. This would have probably been made six or eight months ago. It's growing out. You go in and you cut off the cutting. You still have covering there and you take that cutting that you've just made. Some people like to let them sit overnight. I've never found that to be necessary. And then I tuck them in and pinning it down. It seems like no work at all. But you know, I do have those customers who bring me back their holiday topiary the following holiday. And we revise them, the same topiary. See, I'm just holding that plant in against the moss and anchoring it in with one of my fern pins. If you had a friend and they were sick and you went to the florist and you bought them a flower arrangement, you would spend at least $50. And you'd be really happy if that lasted one week. And here you have a topiary that you could get a couple of years out of. It'll start to look a little tired after that, depending on how much maintenance you do on a regular basis. You could also cut all the plants off of it, clean all the debris off of it, pull out some of those old pins, soak them off in water and start over again. So I've had some of these small frames last about 20 years. During the holidays, we do a lot of succulent wreaths and you can do design and pattern and, and use different color plant material. And of course, at the holidays, you wanna to try to have as much red as you can. But then you need to also think about where you're putting it. Is it gonna get enough sun to maintain all that color? Uh -huh. uh, this is such a cool idea. Now, this is a, a traditional spherical topiary like you'd see maybe in Europe. It, it's like a, a bouquet that goes on forever. You can just have it sitting outside on your patio, but when you have a girlfriend come over for tea and cookies and girl chat, you can just set it there and suddenly you have a bouquet without doing anything. And so you can go from a very casual, just moving it around wherever you need a centerpiece, to the very upscale where you would take floral picks filled with water, put roses in them, and stick them in. Do you have anything like that we could do? Um, <laughs> my garden is full of topiary, but I don't have any flowers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I should have thought of that, knowing you were coming for tea this morning. Well, maybe I'll take this home. Yes, yes. This to particular topiary has been made for over two years. This particular planted topiary is two years old? Yes. That's what I love about what you do, Pat, is there's a magic to it. It captures, I don't know, almost a Alice in Wonderland fantasy effect. My whole topiary career has been based on the fact that I think it ought to be fun. It shouldn't be quite so serious. I think that if you're out there laboring in your garden and there's nothing to make you smile, then why yeah. are you doing this? You've refined what you love, focusing on the best of the figures and sharing that with people who would like to create a conversation piece in the garden. Right. And with succulents, very easy to assemble. Uh, they're not delicate. They handle all kinds of temperatures except for freezing and extreme heat. The big focus is the people their reaction to the topiary. I mean, there's no one that doesn't smile when they come in here. And it's nice to be able to have people come here. Um, garden clubs can come and I can do a talk or a demonstration. With these kits, they can get started work at their own speed. What they don't finish, they can take home and finish. Some people, of course, will have them finished instantly. Best part is we order in lunch. Oh, nice. Where we have tea in the garden. During the pandemic, we spaced our tables out here so that we had the six foot distance we needed. We required people to wear their masks, but we had a good time, you know. Yeah. And you're conveniently located right off of the 78 in uh, San Marcos. Exactly. Yeah. That wraps up our tale. Yes. <laughs> I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Find more information in the video description and on my website, DebraLeeBaldwin.com. Please know I appreciate your comments. 
do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.